Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back. We're here live inside theCUBE. We are in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon A. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly from wikibon.org, and our next guest is Emil Afrem from Neo Technologies. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me. We met uh, when you guys were a couple people uh, in the Valley. Uh, John Callahan and True Ventures introduced us, and uh, what, boy, what a whirlwind for you guys. Um, yeah, back then, we were kind of talking, high-fiving each other, saying, yeah, this graph stuff's going to be <laughs> brutal. This Facebook platform could take it off. It could take off. <laughs> it could take off. I, I think they gotta, there's, a, there's a pony in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Billion users acting users later. Um, just one example of many, and we just had Joe Hellerstein on from Berkeley with Trifacta talking about graph databases. You know, you get nodes and, and edges, and yeah, math kicks in. Graphs are a wonderful thing in computer science, as we know. And so congratulations, very relevant. And as an entrepreneur, uh, great success. Give us a quick update on the company, kind of where, where you guys are now, sure. funding, staff, what your plans are. Yeah, so we're active in the graph database space. Um, you know, we're the most popular graph database out there today. Um, you know, if you look at uh, any kind of objective measures, at least, you know, in terms of uh, number of deployments, uh, uh, tweets mentioning us, which I know that you guys track, uh, things like that, it's pretty, pretty evident that Neo4j is the leading graph database today. Um, it, graph databases is this alternative way of looking at data where you embrace the relationships, right? That's the key difference between a graph database versus any other model out there. So you, you have nodes and you have relationships between nodes, and then you have key value pairs that you attach to both the nodes and to the relationships. It turns out to be a very effective way of managing complex data. Um, and any of the big web properties out there, the, the Twitters and the Facebooks, et cetera, of the world, have all implemented their own proprietary stacks. They had to in order to get to the scale where they are today. Now Neo4j exists as an off-the-shelf solution, and it's used by, this is uh, new for us, it's used by 100% of the Fortune 1 company. That's right. <laughs> That's true. That's right. You can't argue with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Walmart That's, is using us, for example, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. 35 of the global 2000 is using us in, in production. Um, so it's uh, in production, not POC. No, no, I mean it's, it's funny because I'm, we're, we're also open source. We have a community edition which, mm -hmm. avail which is available for free, and we have an enterprise edition which is on a subscription. And a lot of open source companies throw up a lot of you know beautiful logos on their slides, and it turns out that they're actually just users, not customers. Mm -hmm. Right. But no. So we have hundreds of customers, 35 plus. Uh, that are in the Global 2000 and are using us for real mission critical stuff. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the business model. Um, so when you say customers, you've, you've got the, the open source uh, uh, edition essentially and then you've got, I guess, a, what you would call an enterprise edition and, yeah. and package some services around that? Sure, yeah, so, so sort of the philosophy in, in my book is that when you run an open source business, you want to segment out the people who have more time than money from mm -hmm. the people who have more money than time, right? So if there's a student or a hobbyist out there, you can try to sell them on it, but it's, it's never going to work. Like as, as if you have a lot of time, you can work around any, it doesn't matter if you're open source or if you're proprietary, you can work around, it. as long as it's software, you can work around any mechanism in there to protect the software, right? So the people are more time than money, you want to give them your stuff for free. Mm -hmm. But then the people who have more money than time, i.e. big companies, you want to give them a, a, you know, a valuable offering and, and try to get them on a subscription hook. hook. And that's what, we, that's what we have with our Enterprise Edition. So really the key differentiation between the Enterprise Edition and the Community Edition is clustering. So with the database, it turns out to be really important if you have production deployments to have a cluster system, right? So if one machine goes down, you don't want the entire website to go down, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So that's available in the Commercial Edition. Uh, and as well as, you know, we have a high performance cache and we certify it so that it's good for certain operating systems and, and of course, also support. Mm -hmm. It's really hard in that for the enterprise and, and make that uh, make it a viable option. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, kind of the evolution of the company. I mean, you guys have come a long way. As John mentioned, you guys met a few years back. Um, you know, where are you in terms of kind of size of the company? You mentioned customer attraction, which is great. Um, but kind of uh, give us kind of an update on where you guys are. Sure, yeah. So we're, we're still small, uh, although when John and I met, we were tiny. 
<laughs> so in comparison, <laughs> we're bigger, right? So we're 60 people today, uh, spread out that's across. A, that's a decent size. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is. When you go, you know, you see some of the companies at these uh, at Strata and some other events. There's some very small companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 60 no, so, is not so bad. So we're, so we're 60 people, and we're spread out, out across 11 countries. Just mm -hmm. because, as a CEO, I enjoy the pain. That must be fun to manage. You need a graph yeah. database to manage all that. Yeah, yeah. we do. We do need a graph <laughs> database. Uh, luckily, we have one. <laughs> Um, and, um, you know, headquarters here in, in the valley in San mm -hmm. Mateo, uh, where we're 25, 30 people, something like that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's sort of the, the, the state of the union. So you get some good traction here at Strata. I'll read some tweets from our, uh, our, our crowd chat uh, uh, monitoring that says uh, from uh, Russell Whitaker, looks like I may have an, an actual immediate need application for Neo 4J at work after seeing uh, Emil's presentation at Data Science Strata Conference. So hey, congratulations on Thank that. You. you get some yeah. instant instant traction right yeah. after, you know, spreading your wisdom out there. Um, next one, they got a guy, Dan Woods, asked the question, what is the downside, if any, of graph analytics engines loading data from anywhere for analytics? Mm. The downside, if any, from loading it from anywhere. Well, I think it's, it's one of those usual problems where, like, crap in, crap out. Right. If you take all of your data and put it in there, you know, if you have if you don't have valuable scrubbed good data in there, you're not going to get good answers. And I think that's the sort of the the key perspective on that. I think that I agree with that the, the traction of Strata this year is, is really good. The way that I actually introduced my talk at Strata was that it turns out that graph databases, when you look at sites like dbengines.com, which track traction mm -hmm. of all the of the database projects, graph databases grew the fastest of any category in databases, bar none, in 2013. Grew the fastest of any category in databases, bar none, which is pretty impressive, right? At the same time, it's the fastest growing one, but at the same time, it's also probably the most misunderstood mm. because people equate graph databases with social. They say that graph databases are only good for social. And the dangerous part of that is that it's, a par it's partially true because graph databases are really good for social, but not exclusively so. So we have mm -hmm. a lot of traction in financial systems. We have a lot of uh, traction in financial services and in, in um, telecom, in retail. We're used for recommendations, fraud analytics, uh, network management, geo -logis logistics, shipping. There's like a wide range of use cases. Why that, you, that, kind of, that quote, by the way, got a lot of retweets. You must have said that on your, on your presentation because Paige Roberts from Actian said, biggest misconception about graph databases, dash, they're only for social, mm -hmm. dash, Neo4j. Yeah, that was the entire title of my talk, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that, but, but let's talk about it. Why not social? Yeah. Give, the, give some specific examples. Our social is, social is graph-based relationships, et cetera, and unstructured and well, loosely structured. What else? What other besides social? Well, so, so to be clear, social is a great use case for graph yeah. databases. It's not just the only use case. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. Phenomenal and, for social. Yeah. Check, check the box. Go check, there. yeah, and that's what yeah. and I think like Zuck has po popularized the notion of the social graph, right? Mm -hmm. So people know graph equals social to them. I mean, I think that that makes perfect sense. Right? I think that's that's why people think of it in that way. But then, I mean, really anything where the relationships are important. And it turns out that actually my perspective on that is that the difference between information and knowledge is relationships. Like what your viewers are doing right now when they're trying to figure me out is that they're looking at data about me. They're trying to get, gather data about me. And if they're like, name, first name Emil, last name Ephraim, age 35, that tells them something about me. I call that data discrete data, data on me or flat data. But in order to really understand me, if they, if they understand that I grew up in Sweden, which is why I have the Swedish accent, right? <laughs> I live in California. You're good at Winter Olympics? <laughs> I'm good at Winter Olympics. I, you know, I have a wife called Madeline, a daughter called Nomi. I work at Neo Technology. Like all of those things is what gives me color. It is what makes you understand me. And that's all about my connect, the connections between the unknown concept and the known concept. So if that is true, if the difference between information and knowledge is in the connections and the relationships, it's mind-blowing to me that there's not a database system out there that fundamentally embraces relationships, right? Except for graph databases. The graph mm -hmm. databases do do that, which I think is why they have this, this sort of wide appeal. What's your biggest challenge right now with, with your business? Obviously, you're in a good spot, relevant to the market for social and data in general. Um, for, you know, because data is great for, you know, we talked about the shape of the graphs. There's also computational upside of having the ability to, to have arcs and edges and nodes. And, for sure. And so graphs are a beautiful thing from a math perspective. Um, so that's, it's obviously very relevant. Um, so what's your challenge, what's your opportunity that you're going after? Yeah, good question. So it used to be that the big challenge was the market perception of graphs. 
and that, that is still a challenge. Uh, but I, for example, today Forrester released their tech radar report on the operational database management, it's called Enterprise DBMS, and in there they say that graph, they predict that graph databases will be used by 25% of enterprises by 2017. 25%, I mean that's, that's pretty significant from two guys at the Starbucks cafe <laughs> in 2007, right? Or, I mean, should have like no one, yeah. I should have and, and, Which is pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. So that used to be the biggest challenge. It still is a challenge. I'm not delusional, or I probably am, but in this particular <laughs> case, uh, I understand that most people don't yet know what graph databases are. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I do think that we made significant strides in that one. The biggest challenge for me right now is very simple, hiring. Mm. Finding awesome employees. We're looking for data scientists here in San Mateo in the Valley. We're looking for engineers worldwide. We're looking for we're looking across the board, and that is, I mean, it's I'm sure mirrored by a lot of companies here in the Valley, and it's it's, it's a real challenge. Yeah, good luck with that. I mean, it's really hard. It's very competitive. Obviously, Facebook and everyone else wants these guys too. So yeah. as a startup, so, so let's talk about that. So you're in San Mateo. You're going to move all your operations. Some are going to be in Sweden. You have other development centers around the world. Talk about the global aspect of yeah. It. So you guys are you know funded. From, from Europe, so yes. European VC. So we have a European heritage. You know, I grew up in Sweden, the company grew up in Sweden. We still have uh, Malmö, Sweden is our engineering HQ, and we have all of our engineering in Europe, except we also have one guy in Kuala Lumpur and one guy in Auckland, New Zealand, and so we're a little <laughs> bit spread out. Uh, but, but engineering, sort of the, the gravity of engineering is in, is in Europe, um, and then the gravity on the commercial side is here in the valley. But as I mentioned up front, like we're in 11 countries, uh, just because I enjoy the pain of managing a, a global organization. Uh, let's, if we could just go back to some of the use cases and some sure. of the application of the different, Would love to. the different industries. So, you know, the Forrester report, 25% of enterprises are going to be using graph in some form. Um, so that's going to span verticals, uh, by, just by definition. So what are some of the things uh, that you're seeing in, you mentioned financial services. Um, what are some of the nodes and edges that people are trying to understand yeah. in that market, for instance? Maybe we could talk about retail or others. So let's, let's start with financial, then sure. go to retail, right? So financial services, there's a huge leading investment bank in finance. Typically, I can't talk about the customers, unfortunately, but a huge leading investment bank that all of us would know the name of. Um, and their problem used to be that when they onboarded a new trader, it took them two weeks for the, until that person was up and running and had access to all the assets, the media assets, the documents and the collateral inside of the company. It's a heavy, heavy regula heavily regulated industry when it comes to access to those kind of things, right? And it turns out that when they did root cause analysis on that, it was actually because the software platforms they were using, it was so difficult to compute um, whether a new trader got access to this particular mm -hmm. resource. Because if you look at that as, as a node and edge kind of thing, right, node and relationships, the new trader, the new employee, or every employee is a node, and every resource is a node, and resource being a document or something like that, right? But then it's not just a direct relationship between them. It's the, the, the trader belongs to a group, the group belongs to one or more groups, mm -hmm. the content is aggregated into folders and collections, and you have all these kinds of access control list relationships between them. It ended up being a many, many multi-way join in a relational database, which is a minute response time or an hour response time. With a graph database, it's a millisecond response time. Mm. So in that example, it was like the files and folders and documents were nodes and the individuals were, were, were nodes and then whether they had access and if they belonged to different groups and how they're organized were the relationships. Interesting. So that's financial services. So, all right, so let's take uh, what retail we hear a lot about retail. How about something like pharmaceuticals? Pharmaceuticals, we don't have a lot of traction yet in pharmaceutical mm -hmm. in sort of the traditional one. Mm -hmm. We see a lot in bioinformatics. Though. Okay. And bioinformatics turns out that when you dive into that, there's a lot of very graphy data. Actually, in our body, there's a lot of graphs already. Mm. Someone, be it evolution or a divine <laughs> being, or I'm not going to go into that. All right. Someone or something yeah. has already figured out that a graph model is a very efficient way of representing information. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's how our brains are structured. Neurons, synapses to other neurons that are connected in a big network or a graph. It turns out that inside our cells, protein networks are graphs as well. Mm -hmm. And when you start working with that kind of data, it's all very graphy. Mm, interesting. Um, now, a little controversial use case, but uh, obviously the NSA story is out there and the yeah. use of graph uh, type of technology to understand the terrorist networks and bringing in all that metadata. I mean, it's all related to the, the NSA scandal and the things that they're doing. Um, does that have the potential to give a kind of a bad name to graph databases and some of the some of the use cases? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it does. Uh, and I think 
look, gravity rays are a hammer. It's an it's a it's a, an ethically neutral technology. It's a mm -hmm. tool, right? And with a hammer, you can bang someone in the head, or you can build a house for them, right? <laughs> and if the first you know, umpteen guys that you see with a hammer start banging you in the head, you're not going to like the hammer after a while, right? <laughs> right. Um, so I think that for us, I'm personally, let's say, not a huge fan of you know, the NSA type applications. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I think for us, we need to lead with and make sure that all the amazing things that graph databases mm -hmm. enable are the stories that people hear first. Knowing that it is horizontal technology, it can be applied in, in a good way and in a bad way. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, even beyond just the, kind of the graph database market, I mean, do, do you feel like it could have uh, the potential, that whole scale, to at some point turn to the, I guess, the commercial sector, the, the industry that we're in? Um, because, you know, right now a lot of the ire is, is, is directed at the government, but, um, you know, as the public starts to understand a little bit more about all the data that's being collected on them. Um, you know, from my perspective, it, it's it's a it's an issue as we as an industry need to get out in front of. Uh, I mean, what's your take on the potential for that to impact kind of your ability to do your job and and and? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I I do think that it can completely reflect on us, and I think you know with good reason because you know it is a neutral thing like amassing all this data and and then analyzing it. And, being the tool builder for all that mm. is a neutral thing. It can go in, 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 in both ways. And I think the answer is to have an intellectually honest debate about it and, and talk about what do we as a society feel are the right things to use these things for and the wrong things. Mm. And then m just myself from my company, I try to steer us in the direction so that we don't <laughs> engage with those kind of things. Yeah. And that's sometimes doable, sometimes not. Uh, mm. But that's that's sort of my own personal mm -hmm. moral compass on, on, on that issue. Yeah, I mean, it's a you know, it's one of those issues. Tech is an enabler, and you can it can enable positive things, negative things. It's how yeah. you use it, and uh, those that that gets to the heart of all those kind of decisions you make inside a company, for instance, about how you're going to use data. And just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should. Should yeah. yeah. So I mean, talk about the plan. I mean, I see um, a lot of a lot of things to navigate. Hiring, you mentioned getting some quality people, obviously key. What about funding? What's your plans? Looking for more funding. Uh, what's, yeah, what's so we, we raised $25 million today. We have lots of cash in the bank. We're in the fortunate situation where we, we get some funding from our customers, which is uh, the, the, the kind of funding that it's I called, like. Yeah. Yeah. Value, <laughs> yeah, creation, yeah, yeah. gets paid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so, it's, so, that, so that's good. Uh, you know, we have significant runway. We can, if we stop hiring right now, we can cash flow positive if we want to. Having said yeah. that... You want to like, grow. We want to grow and like the market's exploding and we know that the big guys are entering the space. We know that, I'm not going to mention names, but all of the big guys who are in, currently invested in the, in the database space are coming out with graph mm -hmm. databases. We know that, well, it's public now that Teradata launched uh, what they call a graph database. One could argue technically whether that's true, but what they call a graph database um, as part of their Aster story in end of Q3 last year. Um, so that is happening. So now is not the time to, to take it slow. Um, so we, we are investing and we want to do that. We're, may even raise uh, another round in 2014 um, and, and just accelerate because the market is exploding. Well, you guys are a hot startup, a great area, knowing, knowing the history, knowing where you guys have came from. Um, you know, the entrepreneurs that, uh, that make it always have an itch to scratch, always have the persistence, I got to say, in, in following your work and the team. Uh, it's been fun to watch. You guys have kicked ass and you know, nailed it on the graph side. Congratulations, Thank you. and uh, you're going for it. And you know, same with us. You know, we had the same thing. We felt strong about our media uh, that we built this media yes. business, and it's, it's been great. You know, the fifth season with the Cube, we already had 100,000 views here uh, live on the live stream, so it's been great. Um, Fantastic. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Great to see you, uh, Neo Technologies, Neo 4J. Great buzz. I mean, just so many tweets. You're winning, winning the crowd, so to speak. Uh, great community. Thanks for coming on. Emil, thanks for coming on. This is The Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, live from Silicon Valley, all the action, all the startups, all the, all the major big data innovation here at Big Data SV.